Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a short little knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the concept rye or ray rei i'll let you guys actually decide and give you guys a look at the box there uh the designer which i'm not familiar with uh very much at all <laughs> it says karambit maker clearly he makes other things besides karambits or designs other things besides karambits because this is not a karambit um but uh, that's the designer information and truthfully uh the best thing about this knife is the price tag if you're familiar with what we generally see for CPM 20 CV and titanium, um, then you'll probably su be surprised to hear that this knife starts out at $159. They are manufactured in China by concept, but fortunately for you and everybody else, this is the nicer side of Chinese knife manufacturing. Uh, it has great tolerances, great fit and finish, everything that uh, people who are familiar with the knife world uh, have come to expect from concept. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty good deal. Otherwise, it's a very simple knife and doesn't require an overly complicated review. So we're going to go through this fairly quickly. Thanks, uh, <laughs> Thank you so much to Concept Knives for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore complex. Uh, it does come in a few different uh, configurations. I'll link everything down in the description so you guys can check it out if you want to. Overall length of the Ray or REI, 7.5 inches, blade length 3.35, cutting edge about 3.25. How about some size comparisons? Any custom scales you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and Others. Up against the 8010 and 8020.5, definitely much more of an 8020.5 size knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Once again, much closer to the smaller knife in the comparison here. And then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Hogue Deca. How's the action on this knife? It's good. It runs on bearings. It's got a pretty, uh, like the, the lock bar tension is pretty high. But uh, the flip side of that is that the flipper tab really does the job, definitely. You can feel that lock bar tension. It's not insane, but you're definitely going to have to overcome it. Uh, the thumb studs, fortunately, are stepped, and then it has a little bit of a button head, uh, very similar to what Rick Hinderer's current standoffs look like, um, outside of the fact that these are much smaller. But being able to thumb flick it out is all right. Your reverse flick, if you choose to do that, is also all right. Uh, the flipper tab is definitely the best way to do that. And the best thing here, considering how heavy the lock bar tension is, is the fact that they have got the show side scale lower than the rear scale. By the way, not everybody loves the shiny, super colorful stuff. This is like a plasma or lightning anno. It's not Timascus. This one costs a little bit more than the base price, but the base versions are a little bit less flashy. In fact, a lot of it less flashy. Um, so you can check out those other versions if you want to. Uh, but generally speaking, the action is good. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. This is not a thick knife. It's actually a little bit thinner. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here, this guy's not going to take up much more room in the pocket than the Para 3. In fact, I would say slightly less. It's just going to be a little heavier because of the titanium. Definitely smaller than knives like the PM2. Uh, materials. We are looking at, like I said, CPM 20 CV. And that's not Concept 20 CV or Chinese 20 CV. That's American 20 CV. That's the only place that you can get it. So if it's authentically CPM 20 CV, which we have had members of the community confirm that Concept does use authentic steel, um, then it's going to be from Crucible. In this case, 20 CV comes from Crucible, right? If it were M390, it would come from Bowler. But they buy this from Cru Crucible in the United States. So we have CPM 20 CV, and then we have titanium for the scales. We have titanium for the pocket clip, which is textured, by the way. We'll get to that. Um, but uh, yeah, some nice materials. Going to add a little bit of weight uh, versus you know materials like G10 or carbon fiber or micarta. Um, these scales, by the way, on the inside are slightly milled for weight reduction. So weight on this guy coming in at 3.7 ounces, really not bad at all. A lot less. I thought it was going to be like four, closer to four and a half. But yeah, no, that's not bad at all. Uh, considering we have a three and a quarter inch blade, actually not bad ratios. Balance on this knife is also surprisingly close to the pivot. This is weird. Um, I don't know what it is that's making this knife feel a little bit heavier, but honestly, it does feel a little bit heavier than that. So, okay. 
Uh, let's go ahead and do a uh, hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel or the pinned comment. Uh, pivot is a T10. And then for some reason, the body screws are T6. Um, T8. Come on now. Concept T8. Nobody likes T6. And if they do say they like T6, they're lying. Uh, the body screws are T6, but at least there's only two of them, right? And a couple of pocket clip screws. Either way, very simple disassembly. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness on this guy. Blade stock thickness coming in at 114 thousandths. So definitely on the thinner side. And is that it? We weighed it. We measured the blade stock thickness. We did the hardware check. Okay, meat and potatoes time. Um, there's not really anything going on here with this knife that we haven't seen before. The lightning anno is cool if you like that stuff, right? But if you didn't have that, you have a simple titanium frame. You have kind of an interesting blade shape here. I'm not sure what we would call this. A modified spear point? I, whatever, right? The, the tip is very pointy as a result of this swedge, like sort of cutting in and angling immediately down towards the tip. It is very noticeable. That is a fine pointy tip. As far as behind the edge thinness, um, I would call it medium. It's definitely not what I'd call thin, but it's also not thick. It's probably thicker than you might expect for a blade like this. It'll cut just fine. It's got a little bit of curvature to it. Uh, the thumb stud is way into the cutting path. I'll never understand why. I mean, this thing would have been just fine without the thumb studs. Why are the thumb studs even there? I mean, they are... Yeah, about that's like half an inch into the cutting path. That's weird. I mean, it won't, it's not going to like, it's, you're not going to be like cutting something. Like, oh no, I have to stop. It hit the thumb stud. Yeah, you're just going to have to angle a little bit, right? But it is annoying. Um, the blade finish is just a simple satin finish. It's fine. I always prefer to see Concepts uh, tumbled finish because it looks really, really good. Uh, but this is okay, right? I can't complain at the price tag. Flat carries out about 65% the length of the blade. And the cutting bevel is very even on both sides. In fact, fit and finish all the way around is very, very good on this knife. Can't complain. I hate that they have to put codes on it. Um, I hate that they have to put the name of the knife on the knife. I don't mind seeing the designer logo, right? I just I always wish that billboarding is smaller. And I really, there's a certain area where it's like, why are you so far out here? Like you're putting, you know, if this was the ocean, like you're past the buoys, dude. Like put it back here. So, okay. Um, the uh, edges right here are nicely chamfered down. Ergonomically, there's pretty much just one grip and it's all right. That is a long pocket clip. We don't need it about... Much longer than about right there, but okay. It's flat, but yeah, you're going to feel it a little bit. Not to the point where you, it's like, you know, ergonomically like debilitating. It's, it's just, you're going to be aware that it's there, but it's reasonably comfortable. It doesn't feel like a knife I'm going to drop despite having really, you know, like a, a super smooth surface because it, it definitely is smooth, but the lock-in is pretty good. Personally, I like um, the plasma anode, and I'm going to, um, well, this isn't the right stuff to use to shine up the anode, but it does work a little bit. So we're just going to do that here real quick, give you guys a demonstration of how this particular one looks when it's all sorts of cleaned up. Just bring that anode out just a little bit more so we can show it off. But it does look really good. It's nice and vibrant. Right, this finish or any anodization will wear off over time, and it's obviously much duller on the side where I've been touching it. Um, but this will wear off over time. So if you don't want that to look that way, what you need is a pocket knife that is just tumbled titanium or just raw, like you don't want it anodized at all. But um, it does look good. Same with the hardware, which actually I think is steel, and it's just been like heat finished. Um, but I do like this. I think it's cool. Like I said, if you don't like the colors, you can pick up one of the plain ones. These little bowls they put in here, probably just to add a little bit of character to what would otherwise be a very straightforward and boring handle profile. That's fine. Certainly nothing we've never seen before, but it does. It, it dresses it up just a little bit and it allows the anodizing and the light to kind of, you know, play a little bit. It just adds a little bit of depth to the aesthetic. So that's fine. Oh, I'm so cultured. Oh, that adds depth to the aesthetic. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for watching my channel over all these years, guys. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Pocket clip, reversible. You can actually left-handed people can actually carry this. That's great. Um, why why they textured the clip? I don't know. It's the only area of the knife that is texturing on it. Really nice, like almost knurling. Um, it'll make it easier to pull out of your pocket. That's for sure. Because if it was like super slippery, you might slip. Right? Uh, we've all I feel like we've all done that. You slip, but it was enough force to pull the knife out of your pocket, and then it goes tumbling down to the ground. God, that sucks. Um, but anyways, yeah, in and out of the pocket, it's fine. There's a little bit of I, I forget what we call this cant. I think that's what they call it. This pocket cant or or clip cant, uh, the angle. And it, it when you angle it like this and the knife curves backwards like this, it actually does carry a little bit better. It's hard to explain without, you know, actually putting it in your pocket. Steel lock bar insert that does double as the over travel stops. That's fine. That's about what we uh, expect. We have a uh, stop pin attached to the blade. So it's riding on channels on either side of the titanium frames. Contact on both sides, which is fine. Uh, very good, actually. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Consistent. It's a little tight. It'll break in. Really nice D10 <laughs> on the on the heavy side there. And I believe we have perfect centering. Yeah, at least is it slightly off? It is slightly off to the right side. That's probably a pivot adjustment. You know, the blade looks like it's splitting the standoff perfectly, but up here it looks like it's slightly off. I don't know. Usually that's a pivot adjustment thing or adjustment of the body screws. Um, but anyways, this is a good knife. For uh, 159 bucks at base, it's really hard to argue with that. Concept has been doing uh, like this price point for like usually S35EN and titanium. They've been doing this for a long time. So it's kind of cool to see them get 20 CV in there for 160 bucks. Um, this pocket knife design is very ho-hum to me. Um, so it's mainly the fact that the blade is a good blade shape. The uh, handle profile is a good uh, ergonomic profile um, and it's easy to manipulate. And then the materials on top of that. It's not going to win any awards for design. It's basically just a really good value knife. Um, so if you're, I mean, especially if you're new and you're really obsessing over like, I just really want one of those titanium frame locks and 20 CV. I just don't want to spend a bunch of money on something that's not going to be worth it. I would say this is a good one, um, but there's a lot of stuff in Concepts line that's really interesting. And, um, you know, honestly, I, I'm, I'm hoping to see them offer a lot more of stuff like this. A lot more of stuff like this? God, a lot more stuff like this. I would like to see, you know, a much more designy knife um, you know, maybe something, uh, I mean, this is all like personal preference, right? But I, I want to see something that's got a lot more, um, I don't know, a lot more sauce, a lot more zazz in it, right? We've seen a lot of that from concept. I understand this is a specific design from Karambit Maker. Um, it's okay. And generally speaking, I would recommend it to somebody, um, I think, maybe tiptoeing into this territory. This isn't so much a knife for people who are overly familiar with this territory, right? Because I don't know that it's bringing anything. Like, it's just, it's a good tool. Um, but I want to see um, Concept do a lot more with titanium, 20 CV, and some cool an anodizing for between 150 and 175. As it sits, though, it's a decent knife. I think certain people will enjoy it, and it's certainly a good value for sure. So that's pretty much it. I don't know that I have anything else to say. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.